what was that period of your life like? The, the period of your life that, in, at least in commercial terms, were the most uh, fruitful. What did that? Was that fulfilling? It it was. You you were used. It's great to see you know that the people are appreciating what you're doing. I mean, uh, we were going around at that time. My first single was like Lady Dub on Feel. And, uh, you know, that was suddenly riding high in the charts and suddenly I'm there along with Free doing their thing, Mungo Jerry doing their thing. <laughs> and I'm there, this, this quiet sort of madrigal thing called uh, Lady Dublin, inspired, by the way, I would, I would say, by Peter Green, an awful lot. God bless him. Um, so anyway, this, this happened. And then, of course, the next album really did it. And that was T for the Tillerman, because then it was like Wild World and father and son, and suddenly everybody, you know, got to know Cat Stevens. Yeah, and then, but presumably this, was, again, was, uh, in terms of personal fulfillment, limited, but certainly in comparison to the your ongoing spiritual journey, because you made what, in retrospect, still seems like a radical decision to convert to Islam, to change your name, and to... Uh, re sort of the, the renunciation of fame in a sense it's a, it is a, an apostasy of type because in an economic and materialistic society to renounce fame the sort of the one of the great uh, sort of uh, uh, icons of, uh, of our systems of our secular faith is an, an act of yeah secular apostasy I'm happy with that bit of language so like even today it seems like a controversial thing perhaps like um, Islam has become more maligned in the s sort of anglophonic west since then but did you have a, a, an awareness of how controversial what you were doing was well that came of course later um, but uh but I was, I was, I was, um, I was daring. I would say, in in as much as I was able to pass through certain thresholds, which had been placed there by you know whoever and whatever, and, and your your circumstance, your social surroundings, and your your upbringing, your culture. You know, um, I, I wasn't English, but I was. But then, you know, my mm. father was Greek, my mother was Swedish, and you know, and I, you know, I was kind of a free spirit. Uh, I didn't really belong to anything, and that was very important, I think, for my... And the same as what I was in school, you know, it was like I wasn't really in church with everybody else doing what they were doing. So um, that gives you a hint of why I was able to, at, at a certain point, when I was given some sight of another way of looking at, at God, um, that, that was what enabled me to go forward, and 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 that is, that is the most important thing. I think one of one of the, I think one of the greatest discoveries was for me to find, you know, a, um, well, with Islam, it was like to find a religion that was devoted entirely to God. Um, I didn't have to become a Jew. I didn't have to become, you know, I didn't have to become a monk or a priest. It was, it was actually the thing that opened my heart when I read the Quran, which was in about 1975, so about five years later after, after Tillaman, um, was when I came upon the, the, the story of Joseph. And, and it was a, that story. The same thing, I mean, we've got all the prophets are in, in the Quran, by the way. I'm sure you know that, and maybe some people don't, but, you know, they're getting to know. And... and, and Prophet Joseph was, was, was like he'd gone through all these changes. And of course, at, at a certain point, people didn't really know who he was. And he was a slave and you know, he, was, he was sold as a slave. And finally, he, he got his way out of there. And then he made it to the rich house. It was all this. And I found so much semblance um, with his story. And at one point, when, when the brothers came to Egypt, to get their food. And he was in charge of all the treasure, you know, the stock houses. And, um, and when they said something bad about him, they didn't know he was facing them. He, he broke down. He broke down with them, but he didn't show them. And it was that where I realized that who I was, that I wasn't what people maybe make 
make me out to be or what I made my, myself out to be. I was, and that's why I chose the name Yusuf, by the way, in the end, this is Joseph, you know, because I broke through. And, um, and I was given so many, so many enlightening, you know, stages along this journey. I was just so grateful to, to get, to find this religion that where I could devote myself to God and, uh, and wow, that, that was my, that was, well, that, that again, of course, is the beginning of what happened next. But, but you know, because there's a lot that goes on after that. Because a lot of what, um, you know, I, uh, of what I know about your life, um, I, uh, other than, you, you know, your musical genius, I identify with as like, now oh, this is what it's like to feel alienated as a kid. This is what it's like to feel like you never fit in. This is what it's like to become famous and to recognize that fame isn't fulfilling. This is what it's like to put together a personal ideology made up of Hinduism, Buddhism, yoga, Christianity, folklore, mythology, and to deify and worship in a sense your own art, in my case, comedy, and in, obviously in your case, um, famously music. Um, but the, the, the transition, the conversion, the, the devotion to, to follow a, one faith and that 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 what what is it in particular about Islam that called to you particularly as given but you know as you've explained that like the story of Joseph is like an Old Testament story also and why what is it particularly about the nature of Islam that you feel contacted you? Well, I I, I certainly wouldn't have been able to accept Islam if it, if it was if it was like full of superstitions and things and things which couldn't relate to the real world, right? And that, I would say, is the key. Because when I started reading the Quran, one of the things that just I woke up to was the Quran is full of directives to make you think, not to make you follow rituals, but to make you, first of all, think. So then it talks about, for instance, and I don't know any other scripture that does it to this degree, you know, where it points you to the sun, it points you to the moon, it says, these are creations of God. And the night and the day is a miracle, you know, and our, the fact that water falls and, and, and produces fruits and, and animals eat those grass and, and greenery and everything, all this, is like signposts telling you that there is a creator and an, an almighty intellect behind everything that you see right there in front of you. That's very, very important because it didn't mean I had to you know, believe some kind of unseen you know, um, um, dogma without having perfect evidence <laughs> in front of me. And let me just tell you one more thing because there was this missing part of the story, which was where, just before I got the Quran, um, I was swimming in Malibu, in, in kind of, I was like, uh, you know, California there, and, um, and I went out for a swim, and there was no one else really swimming that day, so it wasn't clever, and I did that. And then suddenly, wow, I, I think I was, I'm gonna try and make my way back. And of course, at that point, I realized, I ain't gonna make it. You know, you've got fractions of seconds to decide what to do next. And I didn't have any hesitation. And I said, God, if you save me, I'll work for you. <laughs> and then a wave came, a small wave, and just took me. And I, I had everything I needed now to get back. So people could say, oh, that's a coincidence. Hey, that's the most important coincidence that's ever happened in my life. As they say, coincidence is sometimes the way that God keeps himself anonymous. But this was no anonymous. This was me and God. And, and, you know, later I found, then the Quran came to me. And later, of course, I find that verse in the Quran. It says, oh, when the, when the storm comes and they're at sea, they make their religion pure for God. <laughs> so all these steps and signs, you know, I was reading and were bringing me closer and closer. What could I do? Russell, what could I do? <laughs> I had to submit. That's it. 
Yeah, I really identify with what you're saying about recognizing that instead of looking for some peculiar dualistic uh, proof of God, you know, the lightning flash or the voice from on high, see in all things the divine beauty of nature and the potent intellect that we can read as being behind it. I identify strongly with that. I recognize those moments of terrified communion with God. And I identify too with what you're saying about feeling that God is all, that you've always, it seems like you've always had this yearning, this longing to be at one with God. I recognize that as well.